thank you for joining us on the program today. My name is Tunde Alabi, and it's a pleasure to have you join us on this very special program we're bringing to you here uh, from our North London studio. My name is Tunde Alabi. On the show today, we're talking about entrepreneurship in Nigeria, and we're looking at specifically the tourism um, industry in Nigeria as a viable means of drawing um, a business and foreign um, currency into Nigeria's um, uh, to Niger into Nigeria specifically. Uh, joining me today is one man who has used his talent skill not only to promote Nigeria to but to put something together in a um, spectacular uh, book format that is not just an ordinary book but exclusively photographic in nature. Of course, he is a photographer, but he's not just an ordinary photographer. Um, he was at a point in time Nigeria's official photographer. I'm talking about between 2005 and 2007. He had produced a lot of uh, photographic materials depicting and promoting Nigeria in 2010. He published his first book title, Nigeria, a pictorial and informative uh, compendium on Nigeria that actually showcased the beauty of Nigeria from the north to the south, the east and the west. And today he's done another publication. His, his latest publication now is out and it is called Nigeria uh, 2.0, Nigeria 2.0. I have the pleasure to in introduce to you my guest in the studio, very special uh, person and entrepreneur, indeed, Dayo Adedayo. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Oh, thank you for having me. The last time we had you we, on the show, you you were promoting your book. Um, had the privilege of being given uh, one of the book, and we're talking about enchanting Nigeria. Uh, uh, that was it. That was the last book uh, <laughs> you came here to talk about at that time. Let's start with that one, A Chant in Nigeria. How did it go? Oh, fantastically well. Uh, we've sold out of that. Wow. Uh, but 2.0 is the main thing we're talking about. Uh, uh, which is your latest uh, yeah, uh, Nigeria uh, compendium. Yeah, yeah, compendium, which is more comprehensive, much more comprehensive than the previous ones we've done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, l l l l let's talk about how you have been using this skill of photography not only to draw attention foreign public private attention to nigeria but how, how has it helped you as a person uh it, it has really in a in a, in lots of ways one uh, people have started realizing that you don't have to work in the main industry uh, industries, uh, um, say medicine, accounting, law, and the rest of it to be successful in life. You know, we all have our area of specialties. Uh, this is the, I will digress a little bit. This is the first time in human history that we're going to have over 7 billion people living on this planet. Mm. And the truth of the matter is, our highs, our highs are different from each other. Mm. So, in a philosophical way, we all have different talents. The most important thing is just for us to see, to harness that energy. It's just mm. about recognizing our talents. But coming straight to your point, uh, the country is changing fast. Which of the countries? Nigeria is changing. Oh, okay. sorry, we are in the United <laughs> Kingdom. Nigeria is changing very fast. And uh, how do we promote ourselves? Mm -hmm. How do we sell ourselves? And there's no way we can do that other than visually, either through videos, which Nollywood is doing, mm -hmm. or through still, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to do. But in a lot of ways, it has helped me a lot. Uh, if you carry a Nigerian passport today, all the pictures on the pages of the passports are my work. Wow. You know, so to, uh, to that extent, I'm extremely grateful. Then the new 100 Naira notes is the first digital currency in the world. There is a barcode at the back. If you scan the barcode, 90% uh, of the pictures on the, on, on the currency are my work. The so, barcode. Oh, yeah. On, that's the first digital currency mm. in Nigeria. You read the history of Nigeria. 
the previous leaders up to the current president, President Muhammadu Buhari, you know, and some places of interest in Nigeria, all the places of interest at my work. You know, so in a way, it has really helped me. It has gone a long way. And I could see the younger generation. A lot of, a lot of guys are looking up to me, and a lot of people are going into the profession as well, which is very interesting. All right, so Nigeria 2.0. How did you come about 2.0? That's really digital 2.0. <laughs> what is 2.0? Uh, 2.0, actually, instead of saying the second edition, oh, yeah. uh, you know, you have, you have softwares, you have 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and the rest of it. You know, so just waking up and say, okay, second edition is somehow outdated. Uh, yeah, so outdated, you know. So you, you want go to go, digital. yeah, you want to go with the, even, <laughs> the though, I'm, even though I'm analog, you know, <laughs> the younger generations are more entrenched into digital. That's how 2.0 came about. Okay, now let's talk about Nigeria 2.0, which is a compendium of exclusive photographic materials by Nigeria from the north to the east to the south and to the west quite interesting and fascinating what 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 is different about nigeria 2.0 and enchanting nigeria oh lots of things uh, enchanting nigeria is uh, uh, when you look at enchanting nigeria there are some pictures in enchanting nigeria which are not my work uh, which was done by the Federal Ministry of Information. Mm. Uh, these are pictures from 1900 up to 1983. Those ones are not in Nigeria 2.0. Nigeria 2.0 actually carries all my work, all the pictures you see in Nigeria 2.0, with the exception of one image, uh, which was my portrait taken by a friend of mine, Don Baba. Uh, every other work in that book are mine. Then. In Enchanting Nigeria, you see the anniversary celebration, the centenary celebration of Nigeria. I was the official photographer for the centenary as well. From the beginning to the end, I was in all the committee meetings, and I documented that throughout. So that is Enchanting Nigeria as well. So Enchanting Nigeria is more of celebrating Nigeria. And luckily, the federal government bought into the project. And when Nigeria host, uh, hosted the first, uh, uh, the first uh, what is it called, World Economic Forum in Africa, yeah, that was what they gave to all the participants and guests. You know? So as I'm talking to you, my work is all over the world, and I'm really grateful. But generally, Nigeria 2.0 is just on Nigeria. The historical places you need to see, the monuments, our founding fathers, the lakes, the rivers, and what have you on Nigeria? Fantastic. Now, um, so practically ninety percent of your of the works on Nigeria to put oh, they are your works. You practically by yourself. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. All my work, right. except the my portrait. Uh, your portrait <laughs> that's by your friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Now let's let's try and go through. Um, some of the words, and let's talk through some of this. I, I, I've got those copies, fascinating, um, and they're fantastic. Um, let's quickly talk through some of these materials you've got in it. But first, what are your expectations for Nigeria 2.0? Uh, my dream is for every Nigerian um, abroad to have a copy, if not for themselves, but for their children. The reason being that uh, we do not expose our children to what our country is all about. A lot of people do not have an idea what Nigeria is, including myself, until when I started this project. You know, for example, in 2005, which was my first time of ever going further than Abuja, on getting to Joss, I was dazzled, precisely in Riyom, you know, how beautiful Riyom is. And then again, recently, about 2011, no, 2012 or thereabouts, when I was on the Mambila, you know, everybody hear about Obudu, 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 Katu Ranch, Obudu. But going to the Mambila changed my perception completely. You know, Nigeria is the best kept secret in the world hmm. in, in terms of everything and anything you can think about. We do not sell and promote ourselves. There is a reason for us being the largest population in Africa. When you look at Europe, Germany is the largest, 
they are the best. When you look at America, United States of America is the, be is the largest, mm -hmm. and they're doing wonderfully well. Mm -hmm. When you look into Asia, China, you know, even though Nigeria have the largest economy in Africa. Not anymore. It's just been overtaken by South Africa now. By South Africa, okay. And right. just now, okay. just a couple of days ago. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Okay, that's new to me. Yeah, okay, that's a problem. That's due probably due to the uh, the value of our naira. But having yeah. said that, 180 million people. It's that is, is huge. That is minus Nigerians who are living outside the country. So that is a lot. And Nigeria 2.0. My dream is if if the man upstairs can answer my prayers my dream is for virtually at least about 10 percent of nigeria 10 percent of nigerians to buy into my book as 80 million people that goes a long way and for the rest of the world if a million people outside nigeria can buy into the book as well they'll be able to see nigeria in a different way in a positive way Nigeria, to point, your books are not just books. They're not like you reading book. No, they're not. Th they are works of photography, exclusive works of photography. If, if you might not even read, just looking at the pictorial message gives you some kind of feelings of what Nigeria is all about. That's right. So when you keep talking about book, so my viewers should not think you are talking about normal book. No, 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 it's, it's pictorial. It's We're pictorial. talking about the pictorial, pictorial book yeah, it's pictorial. that would dazzle your sense of vision, visual, um, about what you have. That is Nigeria 2.0. Okay, right. all right, let's start from um, from some couple of pages here. Um, about your picture, starting with the page, you started with all the states, the capital, and their appellations like Abia, Gosson State, Adamawa, Land of Beauty, Kwaibom, Land of Fulfillment, Anambra, the Light of the Nation. Very few people actually know what appellation their states That's right. bear. That's right. Why is this key uh, for me, to the states? Uh, it, it, it just shows you the characters of the state, like Ogun State, which is the gateway state. Education came through Ogun State, and most of the colonial masters came through Ogun State, and that is why you have a lot of first. First of so many things are in Abeokuta, which even the state is not selling, mm -hmm. you know? And I won't blame the state, kind of, because you only do tourism when you have enough resources, when you have enough money on you. And to me, this is the first time ever since the history of Nigeria that people, I mean, government itself is really going to sit down and not think about what is under the ground, but what they can do, apart from royalties that they are collecting from the international oil companies. You know, so there is a lot on ground. And the appellations, you go to Lagos to say, oh, the center of excellence. You know, uh, you go to Ebony State. Ebony is the salt of the nation. Why is the salt of the nation? Because during the Biafran Civil War, which was a tragedy time in Nigeria, the salt that they were used in, uh, in the East then, they got it from Okposi, Lakes, uh, Salt Lake. Mm. You know, so from there they got the name, uh, the salt of the nation, and just like that over and over. But generally, it's just good for the children and some of us who are not in tune with all these things to see what Nigeria is all about. It's more of information. And when you look at all those pictures, what I've done on the 2.0 rule, which is not on the first edition of Nigeria, you see the map of Nigeria. Any of the picture you see there, that is, no, on the picture itself, okay. you see the map of Nigeria like this, that's in the corner there. Oh, yeah. And you see the state, the state map. Okay. So if you are not in Nigeria and you are looking at the picture, that gives you an idea of where the state, yeah, where the state is. Okay, but well, fantastic. Um, for, following that, um, that's uh, following that page you have where you put the National Code of Arms, the National Anthem, the National Pledge, the national flag. And even those who live in Nigeria these days really do have 
a sound knowledge of Nigeria's code of arms, Nigeria national anthem, and the national pledge. Let's not even talk about uh, an ambassador nominee who couldn't <laughs> even recite our national anthem and our pledge. How, how, how is it now the Nigerians are beginning to lose a sense of the pride of the country's national anthem? If every British, who, every American takes pride in their national anthem. Uh, it, 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 Even it, it, people in government these days in Nigeria will tend to be losing. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's very simple, really. You see, you think of national anthem to in an average Nigerian, it, it, it's nothing to them. Exactly. Because the, the, the level of patriotism... Uh, why do you say average if an ambassador and nominee doesn't know? Uh, but he's the, at that level, he's not an average. Before he know. became a nominee, he was just a Mr. Joe. Nobody knows him. For me, people are looking for what to eat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, then we've lost the values. We've lost our value system. And that is, what, that is part of what Nigeria 2.0 is trying to project as well. Uh, the patriotism level is very low. Why? Mm. Because the political leaders are not showing the right leadership for Direction. the city, you know, and it's like, oh, what can I get, grab, go away. So nobody is looking at fighting for uh, Nigeria anymore because it's when your country takes care of you. America always says that they will never leave you behind. Whatever happens to any American anywhere in the world, they will fight to make sure they get you out, dead or alive. Will that happen to Nigeria? The answer is no. All you have to do is to go to the Nigerian embassy anywhere in the world. They treat you as if you are Mr. Nobody. So who is going to fight in such a situation? So for me, it's not about leadership alone. I'm a photographer. That is all I know how to do. That is what I do 24-7. But in my own little way, all I'm trying to do is, this is my field. Let me use my own little resources to sell my country. Of what good is it to me to make money in Nigeria take it abroad, live as if I belong, then when I die, they should come and bury my body in Nigeria. You know, I do not see any sense in it. So let all of us, Bent Television, the first ethnic TV in Europe, you started when nobody was even thinking about it, right? So it's a matter of projecting ourselves. And it's not that you guys are making money. So that is what you can do. Let the engineers, if you look at the NHS in the United Kingdom today, if Nigerian medical personnel should leave the NHS today, the NHS will collapse. So I'm not saying everybody should come back to Nigeria, but whatever, whatever we have, whatever knowledge we have, we should take it back home. Let us integrate, like the Israelis, all Israelis all over the world. There is this loyalty back to Israel. Let Nigerians start doing that as well. And that is what 2.2 is all when about. When you talk about people being loyal to their country, I mean, you just, just said it about the country yourself, being loyal to the people. But it's got to I mean, start so from somewhere. If people, if Nigerians on the average do not have a good knowledge of the national anthem and the national pledge, there's a sense of patriotism lost. It, and you've just said it. Nigeria itself is not loyal to the people because the leaders are not being there for them. And people are more interested in what they can get, the food, the economy, the financial life, and less of loyalty to the country that they don't see as being loyal to them. So do we blame people who do, don't care about national anthem or national pledge? Can we crucify them? We, no, we, we can't. But we just have to stop because we can't keep pointing fingers. Like Yoruba people will say, if you point a finger at someone, the remaining four is pointing back towards you. Mm -hmm. Let us all, in our own little areas, try to fix Nigeria. For me, there is no way the generality of the people will be sane and the leaders will be insane. It, it doesn't work out at all. That's no science. But if you are all sane, certainly the airlight, the political leaders as well will be seen. But for me, Nigeria 2.2 is part of my contribution to the country of my birth. Fantastic. Um, earlier on, we were talking about, I saw a picture here. I saw um, a tortoise, uh, a mysterious, that's the way you captured it. 
Uh, I'm just trying to look for it here now. Yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, that's oh it. yeah, that's it. Um, a mysterious first and only. Oh no, that's on the. I've got a mysterious tortoise. You wrote here. Um, they are yeah, not paginated. They are not paginated. Okay. Uh, that a 300 year old mysterious tortoise can be found at the palace of His Royal Majesty, the show of Ogbomosho in Oyoste. Is that true? Very, very true. Uh, Three hundred years old tortoise. Yeah, tortoises are the longest, uh, the longest living mammals in the world. Uh, in those days, because we are not lettered, even our names. Uh, that is why Europeans and Americans are really interested in our names because names were given to people based on history. Your parents can just wake up one day because you were born. And they just name you. That is why they, they delayed it. Probably why, I will act, because I'm not a student of Yoruba. Probably that is why they delayed it for seven days before naming ceremony in Yoruba land. When they give you a name, there is a meaning, there is a correlation, there is history mm. to their names. Mm. So in the days of the queens in Yoruba land, because they are not lettered, they can't write anything down, they look for the longest living mammal, which is a tortoise. Uh, I think there is one, yeah, I'm certain there is one in the palace of the Alafion for you as well, but not as old as that of Shamu Bumosho. And uh, they feed it, that the date is back because the Shamu of Bumosho knew all his predecessors. So when he dies, the second person that takes over knows when that one dies, you know, and that is the way it has been throughout history. And so we have the 300 year old tortoise. Yes. You saw it? Yeah, I saw it. And that was why I took the picture. I took the picture myself. And the other was very kind, very fantastic king. Uh, sat me down. We went through a lot. Um, um, we talked over. He's an he's 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 ordinary tortoise. It's ordinary. Or some kind of mystery. No, 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 no. It's ordinary. And that's. So? Yeah, it's ordinary. But I haven't said that there are lots of myths and mysteries in Nigeria which I'm working on as well. That's another book on his own because there are several myths in Nigeria that people are not very, not everybody is aware of. Because this, this thought is in, in the palace of Israel Majesty Shon for Ubomosho has seen days, yes, 300 yes, years old. Yes, Yeah, you can go to the British Museum of British Zoo. But how well is, how well is, how well is your state um, pr promoting this mammal and showcasing it to the world has there been a kind of f um uh, fast to find out if it is the longest living mammal in the world yes or oldest is, uh, not not the oldest uh, they, are, they are more living in the gallipolis but uh nigeria generally the the way things works out is our tourism in industry have not even started We've not started our tourism industry. Wow. It's still a gold mine waiting to be tapped into. Mm. There are several places uh, in Nigeria that people are tired of going to Europe. Okay. Let, let, let me put it on hold quickly. Let, let me quickly take this call. It's all the way from Italy. Uh, Chinwe, thank you for joining us from Italy today. Yeah. Good, good afternoon, Chinwe. Yeah, good afternoon. How is Italy yeah. today? Wonderful sunshine, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, my brother there, Dario, I like what he's saying. Uh, we should go back home to develop that idea. But there's a question I want to ask. Are we all Nigeria? One, if we all are Nigeria, where do we start? If I go to Nigeria, I'm an evil man. Because of this tribe, the tribe of the state, we in Nigeria did not have not see ourselves as Nigeria. If I go to Nigeria to establish, maybe I will stop in Lagos to establish whatever I have in Lagos. Tomorrow the Yoruba to ask people, you should go, you should leave Nigeria, you should leave Lagos. Then where do we go? If I go to Kaduna to establish, tomorrow the Alpha will say you should be able, you should leave our place and go to your go to your own tribe to, to establish. How do we start in that? If we can stop this tribal something, that is no, there is no Yoruba, no Bini, no, 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 Nigeria is for us. Establish anywhere you can, 
Answer whatever you only want to answer. Like in Europe, I can go to Rome. I live there. If I die there, they bury me there. I can go to Milan. I can go to Britain. I live there. I establish there. When I die, they will bury me there. But in Nigeria, it's not the same. So um, see, I'm appealing to you in Ben Television. You can, because you are one of our traditional television we have. You can help us to tell our people they should stop driver sentiment. All right, Chimwe, thank you uh, for joining us all the way from Italy today. Uh, thank you for your contribution. Dai, what, what's your response? Are, are we truly one in that country? We are, we are more than one. We are, we are truly one. You see, uh, thank God my brother Chimwe called. Uh, who are the people coming now to say the Igbos wanted Biafra? You see, in a situation where you have economic uh, uh, problems is the lowest of the low or lowest of the lowest that comes out to fight out to say this this i've been opportune to travel seven the 774 local governments in nigeria no disrespect to the Igbos, the most brilliant not i mean no disrespect to the other tribes in nigeria but the Igbos are the most brilliant in nigeria they can get water out of the stone but for me what some, pe some people among them are agitating for is what is going to kill the Igbos. I've seen Nigeria. Uh, I'm biased towards uh, I used to live in this country. So for me, I'm colorblind. I do not see Yoruba. I do not see Ibo. I do not see Aousa. There is no village. There is no village. There is no village. I said that three times in Nigeria where you won't find an Igbo person. Absolutely impossible. And if you should enter a village, and you do not see an evil man or woman there, you should run away. As far as Gamburungala, that's the border town between Nigeria and Cameroon, I think to the west or to the east of Boronu State. No, it's to the, it's to the east. It's to the east of, of Boronu State. There are villages where you don't have any mud houses but built with thatched roofs. There are Igbos with stores. There was even a time I was stuck in a desert. We could not get back to my degree because there was a sandstorm. It was an Igbo guy that gave us drinks, that gave us bread to eat. You know? So for me, who are the people agitating for the Igbo state? There is nowhere where the Igbo are not respected. The last, if you break everything down after the Civil War, during the last ad administration, you have an Igbo man as the chief of army staff. During the last administration, you have all the economic people under the Southeast people. When Obasanjo was the former president, Olusha Obasanjo was the president, the people who are in charge of the economies too are the Igbos. So I don't know where the agitation is coming from. Nigeria is one. And the only thing that is causing a problem at the moment is not within us, me, uh, my brother Ching with call, but from the political elites who are not opportuned to be in position of sharing money. The, if you look at Abuja today, unfortunately, there are no basis of all these things or the statistics. If you look at Abuja today, over 70% of landed properties in Abuja are owned by the Igbos. Are you saying they are discriminating against the Igbos? If you go to Kano Market, have you ever been to Kano Market before? Yes. I've been to Sambo Gary a couple uh, of times. Do you know what I'm saying? You have a lot of Igbos there, even though they have been skirmishes all over the north, they are, are the Igbos there. living? The answer is no, they can't, because your home is where you're making your money, mm. and then you come to Lagos. But, are the Igbos, how many, how many other tribes are in Igbo land? How many other tribes are in Igbo land? But uh, this is not for me. I'm not a politician. I don't intend to be. I will never be. All I want to be is a photographer, project my country. But we all have to simmer down a little bit and look inward and say what can we give it's not about what you can get but what can you give to your country to make your country better europe was developed by europeans america was developed by americans so who's going to develop nigeria of course the sense of loyalty and security must be there for you to i mean 
man is natural. That, that singular trait of your person is there. You want security, security of life, property, you want to leave shelter. But if, if you're a country and nation, you just said it, go to different embassies across the world, Nigerian embassies, you're treated as if you're just a pack of nothing. Anywhere in the world. You I just said it. I you travel across the world. I know, but what so if your embassies treat you as if you're a pack of nothing? How do you feel? How do you want to give back to such a country? Irrespective. Irrespective. Fine, great. Let me take Babatunde from London. Babatunde, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Good afternoon, Babatunde. Yes, good afternoon, my brother. Go on. Okay. You see the first uh, commentator before Adi Dayo made a comment. I want to refer to the comment, you know, which he made, which appears to be a travel comment as far as I'm concerned. Is it the one made by Chinwe? Go on, go on, make up, go on. I think it is about the time that the Igbo, I'm sorry to use this, this language, we are all Nigerians, should be coming onto the program to be saying that they are being marginalized or like uh, Igbo are not, you know, recognized in, the, in, in Nigeria. That is quite unfair. I will just say it briefly. Before the independence in the 50s, in all of in Nigeria, in most of the countries and Prastaka that you know was in Nigeria there, yes. most of the people that work there yes, are mostly Igbo. In Lagos, everywhere, Ministry of uh, 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 POAC, Nigerian Post Authority, ECN, and all the rest of it. The Yorubas, the, the Yorubas did not ask Shaba something in, uh, in Nigeria. All we know about at that time was about educating our people to further our, our education. And nobody blamed the Igbo for, you know, for their own role. I think it is about the time, I don't want to go into the past. They, it is about the time they should educate themselves. If they don't know, they should go to history and find out about whom they were, whom they were in Nigeria in the 60s. Because I'm going to talk about the 60s right from the time when uh, the action group started up to NCNC or NAP, uh, uh, NCNC or, you know, a, a alliance or what, or no alliance. Before the, you know, before the civil war. People who are all over the places. I even up to today, I, 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 they are still everywhere. My yeah. guests are just said it, that even to the extreme part, border, the border between Nigeria and Cameroon, in the yeah. far east part of Bono, in a touched remote village, you will find an Igbo man selling his wares and trying to make money everywhere in the world. And he just said it, that if you get to a village, you don't find an Igbo man, you should run away from that village. There's no life there. <laughs> but we're not talking about ethnicity, we're talking about the issue about Nigeria and how we can make tourism a source of income. Yeah, in I mean you've got this fantastic I've got Julius. So let me quickly take Julius. Julius, thank you for waiting. Um good afternoon, Julius. Hello, yes. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Yes. Um I just want to uh, the uh, the uh, the last topic man that was talking about the e-books. I know. I everybody. don't want to go down this route at all. Sorry? <laughs> I don't want to go down this route of e and Yorubas. Anyway, go on, go on. No, 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 no. Because somebody said something that actually I, do, I disagree with him. Go on. Because he made, he made an assertion that there's no part of Nigeria you will find an Igbo man. Is that wrong? And, and when you get to Igbo land, you hardly find other tribes. Okay. Hello? Go on, go on, Julius. So, I disagree with the mm. man. The reason why you find an Igbo man in every part of Nigeria, no matter the harsh condition, is because an Igbo man has never been given any opportunity in the central government of Nigeria, apart from the last administration. And Nigeria has been in existence for more than 50-something years. And uh, for someone to say that, because I graduated in Nigeria, I could not find any work. And because I could not find any work, I have to leave to come over here. Do you think within you that if Igbo people were given the same opportunities as other tribes in Nigeria, uh, how do, do you, you define? Think, do you how think do you they define? Will go and live as far as the border in a desert land. Who wants to suffer? Julius, how do you mean 
being given an opportunity. Let me give you a case study of my guest. My no, guest no, no, will no. say, wait, wait, Julius, wait a minute. You apply for jobs. Ju Julius, wait a minute. You go for job interview Julius. With, with someone that you are more qualified than and more intelligent than, and you be the person will be picked up above okay. you. Julius, fantastic. How do you want them to survive? Wait a minute. I've got a guest in the studio who, by himself, will call himself, I'm just a photographer. But who today, calling himself a photographer, is a global photographer, Operating no, above no national and international, and who has never held a paid job, but is one of a fortunate Nigerian who has made fortune by himself for himself using what he knows without talking about government um, support. Well, so, what do you no mean by being that. given opportunity? That's, that's that the, gov the Nigerian government has to give an Igbo man an opportunity. So what if the take for instance, most, no, most no, no, the government... Let me finish what I want to say. Take okay. for instance, I have a relation who is running an industry in Nigeria and he cannot even as uh, assess a foreign exchange to import his uh, raw materials. But that he, is not limited he, to Igbo. That is across board to every Nigerian. No, no, no. It is, it is, I'm just telling you that the problem is that Nigerian people don't encourage the enterprising ones. Okay. Brother, they will I agree with you. It, that Igbo man wants to leave every part of Nigeria. I, I don't think any Igbo man will prefer to live in a desert if he could find the same opportunity down where he come from. So, and I don't think, I disagree that uh, because of our nature, when you give us work to do, we do it and we do it for the nation. But other people, you give them work to do, is for their tribe. All right. Okay, Julius, thank you so much. You're going to okay. comment. Right. Thank you so much, Julius. Thank you for your contribution on the program. Let me take Francis. I've got Francis, then I'm going to come to my guest. Francis, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Good afternoon, Francis. Yeah, good afternoon. Where are you calling from? I'm coming from London. Please, let's not go down Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa route, please. Well, let's uh, go down to Nigeria. How tourism has been done by my guests could promote Nigeria and how Nigeria could get to that pedestal we need to be. Well, I, I must tell you that I'm very... Go on. Hello, Francis. Yes, I'm listening to go you on. now. Yes, go on. Okay. Yeah. I must tell you that I'm very, very much impressed with what your guest is saying. Mm. Your guest is saying very, very good, good words because I, I come from uh, Benin City. I'm from Benin, but I, I was brought, brought up in Ibadan. I was born in Ibadan and brought up there. All my, I went to my school in Ibadan, my primary and secondary school in Ibadan. I worked there before I came to London. But I must tell you that the Igbos are very, very dynamic. They are the, the best people you can find in all over the world. I'm not an Igbo man, but at school, the Igbo stable teachers, they, they, they taught me school, in schools, and I, I love that, I like their enthusiasm. It's only like the people, the politicians who came in to spread the names of Igbos and Igbos and Igbos. I'm not an Igbo man, but in, but in those days, when, we were, when, 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 when I was there, there was this NCNC, this uh, action group and all, but the, the Yorubas, I mean, they, 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 they were very much impressed with the SNC. When Zeke would be coming to Ibadan, they say Zeke is poor, I've heard of poor news. I mean, they, they really were very happy, and we were very happy, and there was no discrimination. We didn't know the, 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 the difference no between Ibos and the uh, Yorubas, or the Benis, or the Yowsas. But all we knew that this is our teacher. People like uh, uh, Timna Achebe, People like Chibu, uh, you know, Chibu, and all that, and they were they were good. So the, your your man in your studio there has spoken the, 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 the minds of majority, but the fact is that people are still very selfish. People who want to get to government, they couldn't get there. They coming with tribalism. Without tribalism, Nigeria is great. And I'm not a tribalist. I like the Igbos. I like for I like them for the enthusiasm. They have, they have encouraged us a lot. If we are to, to today be, be going to start, we are going to uh, I mean uh, sort of a building cast anything. People should come out. I think we build cast. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much uh, for being part of the program. Let 
let me take the last one, Dominic. Let me take Dominic, my last call, uh, so that I can go to my guest. It's not the last call, but I'm going to take Dominic and take a break and then come to my guest. Then we'll go return to calls. Dominic, thank you for joining us on the show today. Good afternoon, Dominic. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Tunde. I uh, guess you're calling from Camberwell. Yeah, I'm calling from London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long time. Long time. Go ahead, Dominic. Yeah, um, actually, I want to congratulate our man there because I listened to him. This is the kind of person Nigeria needed to ensure that we uh, leave, uh, take our economy to a, a greater height. Why do I say so? I will ask you one question. Have you been able to see like, somebody like Lai Mohammed to present this kind of album to him? Because this is our roadmap. You, you know, this is one of the road, uh, roadmaps we will be looking for. But however, there's something I want to still add to it. So, of course, you already mentioned everything. I would suggest if you can, because we are still talking about agriculture, because if you can save this thing and make it into two, make one for agriculture. They are talking of one, uh, of uh, a, a production of rice. I discovered there was a documentary that was being run by somebody uh, yesterday from Lincoln, where he was talking of Irin, Itu, in Oshun State, where they produce rice. Where they said uh, uh, the, the rice that is being produced there is called, oh my God. That is a special name to, to ensure that we send all our products from the, uh, Nigeria. Then again, I want you to focus on like areas like uh, where we are producing, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, areas like Ajakuta. Ajakuta, where we have one of the biggest uh, uh, seed companies, and uh, Ajakuta and uh, uh, um, uh, Wari, what the Omi Alaja, Wari mm -hmm. as well. If we are able to harness this area, our economy will move from where it is to another level. I'm not just saying this, pro uh, this area of, uh, 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 of uh, development alone. We should run it across the, uh, all over the, uh, uh, our state to ensure we amend the actual things that we need, needed to showcase to outside the world. Why do I specifically mention the sea? The sea alone, if uh, Buhari is able to take the money that has been stolen by these people and pour it there in Ajakuta, Name it uh, after those who stole our money and begin to say, this is how we are going to move forward. Bear in mind that only iron, Nigeria, where they are building the houses, you discover that each of the houses they are building, there's no uh, part of the house that does not contain iron. Then the railway they want to construct, they don't need to cut over sea to begin to waste their money. Let them first of all construct that at uh, Jakuta and use what they have there inside that place. Now they can sell to other... All right, uh, Dominic, uh, I'm afraid I need to of, let you go of, now. Of, uh, West Africa. And that's what I have for you. All right, thank and you so much. And I appreciate you. And thank I you. hope uh, Lai Mohammed is hearing this one. Because <laughs> we want to secure somebody like you. You are the only person who can, who can give us the Adam roadmap. All right. Thank you. All right, Dominic, thank you for your contribution on the program. Um, quickly, can I just ask, allow you to respond uh, to some of the phone calls you've heard? Um wherever you see two or three Nigerians gathered, they will talk politics, you know. And they will talk tribalism. Uh, no, 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 they don't. They don't. That is the irony of it. But you, first and foremost, it, they talk politics. It's just politics generally, but you don't see ordinary people on the street. The Akim, the Jinwei, and the Abdullahi fighting each other because of tribe. They don't. They don't even see it. They, they do business. They intermarry. The only people that brings these things to the fore are the politicians. You see, for me, I've seen Nigeria in its nakedness. I've moved with the high and mighty. I've moved with the low of the lowest. So th there is no problem in terms of that at all. You just see one politician putting things out there for people to take. And because there are not too many opportunities around, there are some people who are making money out of all these things. You know, uh, like, the, like the lady that called, it's not that I said there are no other tribes in Igbo land. There are tribes all over the country, across each other tribes. But you don't have the concentration of other tribes like you have the Igbos in other places. And it's more difficult for you as a, as a foreigner, they see you as a foreigner if you are Yoruba or Hausa, in Igbo land, to get a landed property as it's as easier for Igbos, but I don't want to dwell on that. That's for politics. Uh, I'm not interested in that. The most important thing is Nigeria is one of the most religious countries in the world. Mm. If we say we are religious, 
and truly there is God, and truly there is heaven, is God going to base everything on tribal or ethnicity or because you are from America, you go through, you are from Nigeria, you stay behind. No, we are all the sons and daughters of Abraham if you are religious. And if you are not, we all develop from the same species. If God is so wonderful to your religion to say your religion is the best, sun will not be shining on you because you are a devil. And sun will be shining on the Son of God. But rain beats everybody. Sunshine on everybody. For me, all I see is one Nigeria. It's the best country in the world, most beautiful country in the world. Whatever you want to say, whatever you want to believe, is now left for you because life is about being positive. If you believe Nigeria is bad, certainly Nigeria will be bad for you. If you believe Nigeria is good, certainly Nigeria will be good for you. But on the whole, as it is, we are the most of the forgiven people on earth. Okay. In, in this, in this compared on um, Nigeria 2.2, you, you also have these pictures of Biafran Hamot cars called Red Devils that are currently in National War Museum. So, whoa, whoa, these Red Devils, what were they? Um, uh, unfortunately, we are not harnessing our energy the way it should be. We are consumed by primordial sentiments. Mm. Ibus are not getting into government. Ibus are the people in government. Yorubas are the people doing this. The Ibus are creative people, extremely brilliant minds. I mean, if you look at the Civil War, we lost a lot during the Civil War. If you look at the War Museum uh, in Umaya, the bunker was built within three months, and people were having rumors all over the place. That was why deliberately I put the plan of the bunker, Ojuku bunker, inside the book for people to see what the Igbo did. For me and for Nigeria, we need to sit down and harness our energies, whether we like it or not. The northerners have the numbers in terms of population. Down south, we are mostly Christians. You hardly see someone marrying two wives. Meanwhile, in the south, I mean in the north, your maids who are 40, 50 something have four, five, six wives, several children. So in terms of voting, they carry the votes. We have to be very realistic about life. And when it comes to the economy, you can't take that away from the Southwest because they are the most educated. Thank God for Shifoba Femi Awolowo. And that is why everybody divides to Awolowo in the Southwest today. And when you go to the East, there is nowhere in the world today in terms of universities, sciences, Hearts where you don't have an evil man excelling in sports as well. You, you look at the numbers of players we have in the national team. Majority of them are from the southeastern part of the country. But are we harnessing all this energy? That is the diversity. So some of these the ammo tanks were actually built. They, they were by, built by, during, by, by the Igbos during the civil war. Wow. How, how will we, those guys have been harnessed. By now Nigeria will probably be building his own hard military hardware. The problem is this. Unfortunately, uh, I usually make reference to Don Jazzy and the Banj. Mm. These guys came in into Nigeria less than 10 years ago mm. and changed the face of the entertainment industry. I see no reason why the younger generation, who are 60% or more of the population, cannot come out to say, this is the person we are going to vote for. Mm. If you are 50 and above, I'm saying this is a personal opinion. People might not agree with me. If you are 50 and above, you have no business being the president of Nigeria. Mm. If you are 40 and above, you have no business being the governor of any state in Nigeria. If you look... Are you, are you <laughs> then... I mean, it, n people like you who have traveled, traversed the north, south, east, and west of Nigeria... People will we'll be looking up to somebody to lead it. Are you happy to be like, to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to mentor Nigerian youth? I'm, I'm, I'm doing that in my own field. I'm not a politician. I'm not, because leadership is not something that you train for. It's inbuilt. It's either you have it or you don't. That's leadership. And even among children, the same children in the house, you will see one is ahead of the pack. You know, that's leadership. My own take is my forte of photography. Fantastic. Whatever I can do in photography, I will use to sell my country. Fantastic. Here is Dio, Adedio, the publisher of 
uh, uh, pictorial uh, uh, book um, companion put the Nigerians into pictures called the latest on the score Nigeria 2.0 you just need to get a copy of that book anywhere you find yourself just go for this book uh, every Nigerian should have it. it's not just like a normal book you read they, they are books in pictures I, I like to take a break now and quickly bring the um, the, the commander general of uh, Nigeria uh, core into the program to continue with Dio. coming on board now um you're welcome back from that short break now we th there is a youth mentoring corps being managed by alice to show who is the commander general of that youth corps across the building mentoring youth in every in every sector of life would you be willing to um mentor nigerian youth as you spoke in that no no president nobody above 50 should should Talk about going near uh, any leadership role in Nigeria. Would you be willing to mentor Nigeria before I, 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 I call the Commander General to decorate you? Um, certainly, yes. That is the only thing I hold Nigeria now. Um, I'm, I'm over 50, you know. Uh, uh, I, at the end of the day, we have to look at those who are going to take over from us, you know, and that is the way. I see the country. Okay, all right. Uh, let me let me. Don't go anywhere. This okay. Is, uh, I, I was sneaking behind. Uh, you know, as they said, uh, the Nigerian in Diaspora Mentoring Corps is the organization that we yes. use to utilize those who are in the diaspora, the likes of Tende, myself, to mentor the younger generation, especially us who are coming from the media industry. So now, of course, uh, as a top photographer in Nigeria, and I'm happy that to hear that you, you are willing to mentor younger generation in Nigeria. So with that, if I have the privilege you do of have the privilege. Uh, making you one of the N Nigerians, because you've been in the diaspora, but most, more or less just to help us mentor our younger generation in Nigeria, not in Nigeria only, but across Africa. So it's my pleasure to please put this there. And uh, let's see if we get it right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, congratulations, and we look forward to seeing hundreds of our younger generation in Nigeria becoming part of the industry. So All right. Um, um, that is Dr. Alice Shode, the Commander General of the MCO, an international mentor they call Building uh, Viral versatile strong nigerian youth in every area economy business politics in nigeria uh, even across the world so you've just been made one of our mentors now. thank you once again thank you sir yeah. All right, um, that is the new mentor. Uh, another general being made by a, a general and a commandant. Yeah. Thank you for sneaking into the show. <laughs> we need to call it a day now. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.